Hey everybody, Danielle Lateski here, founder of Our Gifts, His Mission, and I'm super excited to do our first video through this page. And I just really wanted to let you guys know why I felt like I was being directed in this path, down this path. So I just started, decided to start this group because I feel like it was put into me by God. Like he told me I need to do this, even though every single piece of me, like every earthly piece of me was like, don't do it. You've got all this other stuff going on. You've got this, you got to take care of this and you have three kids and they'll probably come knock on the door at some point while I'm trying to do this video. And you might not even get this video done because you just got so much to do. And so I kept trying to listen to the earthly part of me and say, no, there's just so many reasons why I can't do this. But finally it was like a light went off and it was time to, to make this thing happen. So basically I, I really feel like I was just given this gift from God. And those of you that do know me know that I am in network marketing. I love what I do. I'm very successful at it. And I totally, totally, totally feel like God gave me skills to be able to run that business. And through that business, I am able to minister to so many people uh, and network to so many people because that's what I do. Those are my skills. Those are my strengths. My strength and my skill is networking, is falling in love with people, loving on people, leading people, show them, showing them that they can do anything that they put their mind to. And, and also through that, I realized that God has given me a calling. And this is one of those callings. So I want to read to you a verse in the Bible that I heard at church last weekend, and it really was a confirmation that I needed to start this page. So here goes. And I got to put my glasses on for this. I just take them off because of the glare, but you get to see. All right. The parable of the bags of gold, which is Matthew 25, 14 through 28. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold. To another, two bags of gold. And to another, one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So he was given five and he gained five more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. So both men, the five bag and the two bag men, each 100% return on their money or on the investment that was given to them. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of his servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Sorry, scrolling up. Mastery said, you've entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvested where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest at least have put it in the bank to gain interest. Interest is like nothing now, but still not the point. At least get me interest. He wasn't even necessarily asking for a hundred percent return. He was just asking that you do something with the gift that he had given you. And the gift that this master had given to his servants was this investment, these bags of gold. And the third guy just squandered that gift that was given to him. And so this really, really, really hit me. I was like, Hello, I gave you some gifts. You're doing all right with them, but I'm going to need to see a little bit more. That's kind of what I felt. Like it was like, psh, psh, get to work. Like you have more that you can do. So 
and also the the guy with one bag he started shifting blame and making excuses which is exactly what we do when we don't want to do what we're being told to do right so he asked you to take care of this he entrusted you with this gift and he wanted in return in this investment which is the same thing that god wants he's given us these skills he's given us this these gifts to fulfill his mission our gifts his mission <laughs> see that but yet we are squandering these gifts like i do though feel that god gave me these gifts a long time ago a long long time ago and he's put me through a lot of trial and error with these gifts <laughs> they're not always a gift if you ask certain people <laughs> um my strength some people don't see as gifts but he does and so he was asking me to use my networking business as a ministry which i've been doing but i felt like i was missing something still like there was still more to it so he's been telling me and i've been like no i'm too busy it's too much going on leave me alone because a minute ago when i was reading that verse my door was knocking like i told you it would um so he's given me these gifts and i've been using them to further his kingdom but he was like no there's more you need to get a little bit more uncomfortable with what I've given you. So I am, and here I am, and many of you might not know, but I'm a little bit uncomfortable right now. You can probably count the amount of times that I say um in this video. Please don't pay attention to that part now that I've said it. You're gonna hear it probably a ton. I'm really working on that um, so don't hold that against me. So one of the next verses that, so kind of the point behind this group is, for us to dive into the Bible. If you know me, you might know, or you might hear me say a hundred thousand times that I am not the type of person that is very good at studying. I am not good at reading. I will watch a video as many times you need me to watch it or an audio. I get that. But if I have to read a book by the end of the page, I know what I'm having for dinner. I have no idea what the book said, but I know what I'm having for dinner. So doing this is really getting me outside of my comfort zone and trying to break down these verses when I go to church all great and fine I can understand the pastor explains it to me we're good to go but when I have to start doing it for myself it's a little bit more difficult so um this see there's one um we're working on that this group is going to get me outside of my comfort zone it's going to allow me to minister to you guys on Sundays so every Sunday evening there will be something posted on the our gifts is mission page uh just going over whatever it is that i feel like god put on my heart that week whatever it is that i start researching and digging into and then at the end of every um <laughs> go again i know you're listening to it now at the end of every service per se i guess you would say or uh, every video we will have on sunday we will have a bible study verse that we will go over on Wednesday evenings. So I'm really excited. I will share that with you guys at the end. Peter 4.10, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. We are literally ingrained to serve one another. That's literally in our DNA is to serve, to care for one another. It's especially as a mom, as a woman, like we, it's ingrained in our bodies to care for one another it's it's just there god's put it in our bodies to do that and so he's also telling us that he's giving us these gifts and not to waste them not to make sure that we're taking advantage of the gifts that he's giving us so to go into that a little bit further when i mean taking when i say taking advantage of the gifts that he's given us not to build your kingdom but to build his kingdom so you may have heard many, many times that money is the root of all evil. I totally disagree. Money can do some amazing things. It can further his mission. Obviously, the churches wouldn't be able to survive if it wasn't for tithing. It wouldn't be able to survive if it wasn't for money. None of us would be able to. It's just the currency that allows our world to work. Uh, and that's what it is. It's a currency. It's not anything that we should be worshiping. We shouldn't be worshiping money, but we do need it to further his mission. I'm not asking you at this point to make any donations. <laughs> I'm just saying that it's very important that you tithe and he asks you to tithe 10%. So you need to be doing this with your church. And if you don't have a home-based church and you just keep skipping back and forth, please find one that you love. Find one for your children if you have kids because this is a crazy, crazy world. I'm kind of going a little outside of my outline. This is a crazy world. And your children need to have a godly 
idol, not in the church, but God himself is the only idol to, to idolize. But just to look up to people that are following the right person uh, or God, God being the right cat, I guess you should say. Jesus is my cat. No, not too much. Okay. As you can tell, I'm also not a pastor. I'm just a regular old person. And Jesus said that all Christians are ministers. So therefore, this is what you get. So don't use your gifts to build your kingdom. Use it to build his kingdom. And my gifts are, I am using my gifts to take care of my family. Why wouldn't I? That's very important. He doesn't, Jesus, God didn't give me my children to not take care of them. He gave them to me because he believed that I was the right person to be equipped to handle these three monsters. No, I'm kidding. They're not monsters sometimes um, outside of the store. And I love them. And he gave them to me and he trusted me with those amazing, amazing little people. And I love them so much. And so he gave them to me. So don't squander your gifts. Use your gifts to further his mission. Our gifts, his mission. Again, get it? You like how I did all that right? Okay. Matthew 20, 28. This is really powerful. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. I'm going to read that again. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life or to give his life as a ransom for many. So I, my interpretation of that is even Jesus came to serve us to further God's kingdom, to further his mission. And obviously it was a huge mission. He died because he knew that each one of us were worth his sacrifice, his ultimate sacrifice, his life. He gave his life to save all of us because he knew this world would be of sin. And so again, the whole reason why my body was saying, don't do this because it's not comfortable. Uh, don't do it. Don't do it, Danielle. But I got confirmation um, in his message. There's another, um, see, I'm going to work on that. So I wanted to introduce to you guys the second part of this, our gifts, his mission, that was kind of laid on my heart. I was laying in bed with my daughter, trying to get her to sleep the other night after I'd already come up with the, well, not me, but after the idea for our gifts, his mission had already been dropped on me like a brick. Um, <laughs> our gifts, his mission was the idea. And then all of a sudden I'm in that like REM zone, like almost asleep, but not really. I could still hear what's going on. And this came to my mind. And so this is a four part card and there's the back. So this will be sliced. So it'll be you know, more like this size right here. So I'm going to read this to you. Someone gave you this prayer card because God laid it on their heart to do so. Your prayer warrior may or may not know you. However, they want you to know that Jesus loves you and died for you specifically. Please continue to pass this prayer card on to someone else who may need your prayer in return. The power of prayer is so strong, and I pray that you continue this movement. Your gesture of prayer could totally change someone's life. Hashtag intentional prayer warrior. For additional cards, visit, and then there's a Facebook link. Intentional prayer warrior is the Facebook page. And each one of these cards is going to have a different number after Intentional Prayer Warrior 1, Intentional Prayer Warrior 2, Intentional Prayer Warrior 3. And so the cool thing is you're going to be able to track how your prayer made a difference in the life of so many other people and how it's crossed the globe, not just the U.S. where we are, but how it's crossed the globe. I don't know if you've ever seen a dollar bill that says, where's my money? I don't remember what the link is, but same kind of concept. You can go online and actually search the serial number for that dollar and see where it's been, who's had it, how far it's traveled. It's really kind of a cool thing to see, but can you imagine how much more powerful it would be to see how your one single prayer over someone has turned into somebody else praying over somebody else, praying over somebody else, over somebody else, over somebody else, and just infinitely across the country. Now, yes, yeah, some people will lose these. Uh, some people will decide it's silly and throw it away. That's okay. You tried, you did what you thought was best and 
what God placed on your heart. So how many times have you walked past somebody and just felt like you were supposed to talk to them and you didn't and you're like kicking yourself later. Why didn't I talk to them? I'm pretty sure my conscience, God was telling me to speak to this person or somebody says something and you're like, I'll be praying for you. And then you never pray for them because you forgot or because you just got busy or whatever, you know, those things happen. And so that's what this little card is for it to pray it forward. So directions on the back, number one, intentionally pray that God gives you eyes to see and ears to hear who this prayer card should go to next. So listen and hear whatever it is that's supposed to happen next. Number two, pray it forward. Once you find the person God placed on your heart to give this card to, start praying intentionally for God to bless their situation. So not a blanket prayer. Intentionally pray for that individual person. And if you know their situation for their specific situation. Three, send this card to the next hashtag intentional, intentional prayer warrior. You might send it via mail, hand it to a friend, or even give it to a complete stranger. Four, Visit facebook.com intentional prayer warrior and post something about your experience as a prayer warrior along with a specific hashtag from the front of your prayer card. Please feel free to add a picture of yourself holding your prayer card. And so you can do this on your wall. You can do this on your Instagram. You can do this on the intentional prayer um, warrior page. You can do this anywhere. But the cool thing is when you search for that hashtag, you're going to be able to find who had it before you, who had it after you and after them and after them and after them. And so five, track your prayer card via the hashtag found on the front of your prayer card and at Intentional Prayer Warriors Facebook page or track through the individual hashtag specifically. Your prayer warrior journey has begun. Don't stop now. Keep praying together. We can make a difference. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So believe that you can do it. Believe that this card, pray over this card, that it's going to reach the everybody that it needs to. And so the idea behind this card is then to bring people over to our gifts and his mission page to, so that we can minister to them so that we can strengthen his army. Like that's what we're for and not just here in the U S but all over the world. So that being said, um, um, <laughs> I have recently, about a year ago, my family and I moved from Maryland to Florida. And so my pastor in Maryland, this isn't an exact quote, but it's my interpretation of what he said and what I remember of it. Pastor Josh said once that when I get to heaven, a stranger, a stranger will come up and thank me for the donations that I've made to missionaries in Africa. Because through these donations, a Bible was purchased bringing me to Jesus. So what he was saying is he's going to get to heaven one day and a complete stranger is going to come to him and thank him. Because through his $10 donation or whatever, a Bible was purchased for a church in Africa. And I don't even remember if this was the exact example. Like I said, interpretation and memory. <laughs> but this is the concept of what he said, that he's going to get to heaven one day and somebody's going to thank him specifically for some little detail of what he did in this life. And so I'm excited for all of us to take part in this and be that person that can bring someone to Jesus, that can show them that God has plans for them and that he has given them gifts and strengths to further his mission as well and to really show you the power of prayer. So just can you imagine how powerful it's going to be? If you are interested in getting any of these prayer cards, just uh, go to facebook.com slash intentional prayer warrior and there's a button where you can message me um, and request um, and request cards. Just give me your name, your address, and how many cards you want to receive. I am doing this fully myself at this point, but at some point as this continues to grow, I will probably set up some sort of donation page to cover the uh, cost of shipping, printing, and laminating because we want to laminate these so they don't get destroyed real quickly. But um, not at this point. So I'm really excited to see how far these prayers can go. And so to finish this out, thank you guys for taking time to do this. I want to do this every Sunday. We'll be doing some sort of service online. <laughs> um, um, I'm going to stop that. Okay. So every uh, Sunday, we'll be doing that Sunday evening. 
And then every Wednesday we'll be doing a Bible study together. And so next Wednesday's Bible study is actually John 15 verses one through 17. So between now and Wednesday, go ahead and pull up that verse, study it, maybe pull up some YouTube videos. I don't know, maybe some services that have discussed John 15, one through 17, or just kind of figure out what it means to you. And so on Wednesday evening, we're going to come back together on our gifts, his missions page and discuss what that means. So Sunday evenings, we'll do our service and Wednesdays, we'll do our Bible study. Again, like 20 minutes, nothing major, just to kind of give you a little bit and give me a little bit. So I'm really excited about this. Thank you guys very much. You enjoy the rest of your Sunday and have a blessed day. Love you guys.